And I don't think that Koshi came up with the first equation and Riemann with the second one. <laughs> so fluffy. Three, two, one. Dr. Payam. Alright, thank you for coming. And today, by popular demand, I will derive the Cauchy Riemann equations for a complex differentiable function. First of all, notice two names, maybe the two biggest names in analysis, so it's probably an important equation. If you have Cauchy and Riemann, you know, French and German together. Very nice. So, what does that say? Suppose, suppose you have some complex function. Let's call it f of z, where z is just x plus i y is of the following form, you know, u of x comma y plus i v x comma y. So suppose you have a complex function, this is u is its real part, v is its imaginary part, and you know it's differentiable at some point. Differentiable holomorphic. You can put on diable. Di okay. Diable, yeah. Yeah, it's a diable. Diable at some point z naught, which is x naught plus i y naught. So suppose it's differentiable. It turns out that both the real part and the imaginary part have to satisfy some very particular equations called the Cauchy Riemann equations which is, it's a very important way to check if a function is not differentiable. Namely, they satisfy then u and v satisfy the following equations ux, namely, if you take the real part, differentiable with respect to x, that equals to the imaginary part differentiated with respect to y, and uy equals to minus vx. Again, at the point z0, which is like x0 plus y0. And again, and those equations are so important, they're called the Cauchy Riemann equations. And I don't think that Cauchy came up with the first equation and Riemann with the second one. I think they just came up with it. Maybe independently. Okay, great. Let's show it. So here's a proof. First of all, what does it mean for a function to be differentiable? So maybe step zero. So recall, maybe in an ironic sense, that f is differentiable, just diff this time, okay, at z0, okay, provided, so provided, the following limit exists, and guess what? It's the same limit as in calculus. Limit z goes to z0 of the difference function. Difference quotient is the following. f of z minus f of z0 over z minus z0, and this to makes total sense because those are complex numbers, this is a complex number, and we can divide complex numbers. So it exists. In particular, what does that mean that the limit exists? It means no matter how you approach z0 with z, you always get the same limit. So for example, you can have the squiggly path, huh? going to z0, or you can have, I don't know, uh, this path going to z0, or maybe this straight line going to z0, no matter how you approach that point, you always get the same limit. Okay. And this seems weird, but let's take that into to advantage. So it's like killing the enemy with its own weapons. You know, wow. Makes sense. Yeah. So again, let me write that in particular. This limit is independent of how we approach C0. Alright, now we can start the proof. Step one. Okay. So basically what we're going to do, 
we're gonna we're gonna choose two very smart paths and that will give us two pieces of information but because this limit is independent of the path it'll still give us the same number at the end so consider first of all the horizontal path Namely the following, you start with Z0 and you go horizontally and suppose Z is of the form Z0 of your yeah, Z0 plus T which is really X0 plus T plus I Y0. Namely, uh, all you do is just, uh, you go sort of horizontally from Z to Z0. Then, the limit becomes the following. Namely, we get limit, if you want limit, t goes to 0 of f of z, which is z0 plus t, minus f of z0 over z0 plus t minus z0. Of course, you can simplify it, but let's save the fun for later. On the other hand, what you can do, you can also consider the vertical path. <laughs> Namely, if you have the point Z0, you can also approach it this way, like going down. In other words, what that means is, consider a point Z equals to z0 plus ti, where again t is a real number, and that's if you want x0 plus i, y0 plus t. And if you do that, you get limit t goes to 0 of f of z0 plus ti minus f of z0 over z0 plus ti minus z0. And again, you might be excited to cancel those out. Just wait for it, you know, we'll do this later. Okay, what have we done? We have two paths, one the horizontal path and one the vertical path. And we just calculated the derivative. But remember, this limit here, it's independent of the path. And therefore, no matter how you approach Z0, you get the same answer. Which means, and this is the most crucial part, those two limits are equal. And the rest of the proof is just writing down what the two limits are. So let's get, let's call this A. And let's call this B. And we get A equals to B. And then, the rest is just, let's calculate A and let's calculate B. So, let's calculate A. Again, A equals to this limit, but remember that F of Z equals to U of X comma Y plus I V of X comma Y. So, F of Z naught plus T, oh, it looks like a zot. Like the UC Earth. Yay! <laughs> zot, zot. Okay. <laughs> so that equals to U of X naught plus T. Y, Y naught. Plus I, V of X naught plus T. Y naught. Minus U of X naught, Y naught. Minus I, V of X And now, if you want, you can cancel out the Z naughts and you get a T. And again, all I did, I just wrote F of Z naught plus T, but remember Z naught is X naught plus Y naught. So Z naught plus T is X naught plus T plus I Y naught, which you can just write in terms of X and Y. Let's rearrange this a little bit. Oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot the limit. So limit t goes to zero of that 
and then let's just rearrange this a little bit. So you get u of x0 plus t, y0 minus u of x0 y0, okay, uh, over and plus i v of x0 plus t, y0 minus v of x0 y0, all this over t, but we can um, calculate this a bit further. Let's just split up the limit. So that limit t goes to 0 of u x0 plus t y0 minus u of x0 y0 over t plus limit t goes to plus i times the limit t goes to 0 of v of x0 plus t, y0 minus v of x0 y0 over t. But look, if you remember your multivariable calculus, this is just a difference quotient of u in the first variable, so it's really the x derivative of u, namely ux x0 y0, and this is the x derivative of v, you know, because you're considering the difference quotients in the first variable. So vx plus i, vx, x0, y0. The point is, this is it. This is what we get from the calculation of a, which is one piece of the equation. And now, let's do the calculation now for b. If you're bored, you can just skip ahead to a couple of minutes later, okay? <laughs> Oreo is fluffy. <laughs> okay, now let's do B. Let's do step three. For B, you do the same spiel again. So sorry, you have to go back. So you have this limit. Instead of writing F, we write U plus IV. So let's not go back. <laughs> A marathon. Okay, <laughs> b is just equal to the limit as t goes to zero of u of x naught y naught plus t because here we're increasing an imaginary unit plus i v of x naught y naught plus t and then minus u of x naught y naught minus i v of x naught y naught over t. Again, split up the limit. So that's, if you're, oh sorry, it. Why it? Sorry. Sorry. It's because you're, <laughs> hope you're not dizzy, but you just cancel out the z naughts and you're left with ti. Okay. <laughs> ti, it. Don't tell the it department I said that. Anyway. So you get 1 over i times the limit as t goes to 0 of, you put the u's together, u of x0, y0 plus t, minus u of x0, y0, over t, plus, so here, if you group, oh no, let me do it, so plus um, 1 over i, times the limit of t goes to 0, of v of x0 y0 plus t minus v of x0 y0 over t, except with this extra factor of i, but this i disappears. <laughs> and also remember 1 over i, it's the same as minus i. So you have minus i times this limit, but here we have the limit in the y, in y variables, which means this actually gives you the y derivative of u. So uy, x0, y0. And the same here, we have the y derivative of v. by, x0, y0. That's great. We have a, we have b. Let's just put them together. 
together to have one complex equation. So it's sort of like creating a child. You have the father's part, you have the mother's part, you put them together. It's the same thing here, you know, A equals to B, and then let's see what the offspring is. So, <laughs> A equals to B gives the following. So A, we have UX plus I VX. On the other hand, B is uh, VY plus I minus UX, UY. The real part here is VY, the imaginary part is minus UY. Okay, at, again, at Z0, which is X0 plus I, Y0. Okay. okay, great. And here's the important thing to know. One complex equation is as powerful as two real equations. And that's why in the end we get two results. Because if you compare the real part, you get ux equals to vy. And if you compare the imaginary parts, you get vx equals to minus ui. In other words, ux equals to vy and ui equals to minus vx at z0 and lo and behold those are the Cauchy Riemann equations thank you so much if you like this make sure to subscribe to my channel Dr. Payam Show and we're happy and we can go home both horizontally and vertically <laughs> yay, yay. The party ain't stopping until I leave. Oh, <laughs> nice.